All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final episode of the South Bend Heavy 10 Rebuild. This is the big reveal. So here it is, right behind me. And it's been a while getting here, but uh, let's have a look at it, see how we did. <clears throat> Okay, well here it is. It's finally done. Just going to do a walk around. Let you see every uh, angle here. So starting at the tailstock end. We've got our mounting base. Emergency, <coughs> Emergency stop switch. This is the tail stock you saw in the rebuild. Uh, I still have the original <clears throat> tail stock. That's going to be another project, uh, getting it restored. There's our apron and carriage. And I made these covers to cover the slot for the taper attachment. The Aloris tool post came with the uh, lathe. I had to take it apart and clean it up. And then I've got the got the four jaw on there right now. Here's our quick change gearbox, single lever. Feed uh, reversing lever. We've got the guard with the labels. These are all the original labels. I did my best job restoring these. It was uh, it was not easy. Um, base right, come back around this way this uh, lamp it came with the lathe it was really in bad shape I had to do a complete rebuild put a new socket in it rewire it repaint it and so forth here's our controls Okay. I put a new um, new crossfeed lead screw in. Um, so with the taper attachment, it's a different it's, it's a different uh, lead screw, and there's two different versions. So this is the older style. And there's I actually there's a guy on eBay that sells. Um, uh, reproductions and if you've got the older style this is the heavy 10 if you got the older style um, that uses just bushings on the uh, on the shaft it's the same as a 9 inch taper attachment lead screw so that's what I've got in here it fits perfect okay The compound, this is not the original compound. I've, I replaced it with the large dial type. Um, I put a new, um, a new feed nut in it. Uh, I do have a fair amount of backlash here. What do we got there? There's uh, Let's take it to zero. <laughs> My math isn't working today. <laughs> what do we got? Fifteen thou. But if you if you notice, see that gap. So it's not in the screw. It's it's in the clearance between the uh, between the handle and the uh, and the indicator dial. So uh, that may be another project to see if I can improve that a little bit. Although I'm not too worried on the compound. I've got the um, the gib. 
pretty tight on the compound. It seems to be the weak link as far as rigidity, so I keep it tight. You're normally not doing that much feeding with the compound. And then on the uh, cross feed, let's see what we got here. I think we've got about 10 thou backlash. There we go. And that is, it's not the so much the nut and the screw, it's actually the clearance back here on the um, taper attachment on the end bushings. Okay. And then our uh, carriage uh, hand wheel. Still got a little bit of backlash in here but huge improvement from when I got it. It was really bad originally. All right, uh, the chip pan. So I left the um, top side of the chip pan just unpainted, just polished it. The uh, bottom side is painted. And I didn't think there was much point in, in trying to paint the top side of the chip pan. It's just gonna get beat up. There's our uh, war production board label. Okay. I added the emergency stop here. It's tied into the VFD. Um, that's You can buy these on eBay. They're like 10 bucks. Okay. So up here on the headstock. Uh, this uh, nameplate. I decided just to leave it in brass and just just clean it a bit and just give it a, a clear coat. Yeah, let's open her up here. This one back here was really beat up. I, all I could do is just clean it a little bit and clear coat it. Okay. And you guys saw the quick change on the previous. Alright, and then down here, so our underdrive, there's the uh, new to this machine motor. So for power wiring, what I've got is a, um, it's actually a generator extension cord, it's a four, four conductor, so you know, three phases plus ground. And if we come around here to the other side, comes out right there, and I used both ends of the. Uh, it's an extension cord for for a generator, so I've got the um, I've got a twist lock connector here. So if I ever need to move the machine, I can just undo it right there. And for the control wire, <laughs> look familiar. I just used a nine pin uh, uh, computer cable. Perfect, you know, nice connector. And, and there's really no current, you know, heavy currents going through the control wire. So I'll just load light gauge wires, fine. Uh, did a little cable management. The, uh, the power cord right there, the white one, that goes down and it, uh, it's in the, in the uh, wrap. And it ends up coming up here. It splices in in the original um, connection box here, and then it goes up underneath and feeds our light. Okay, so the back side of the uh, Chuck key holder. So what I did on let me see if I can get around here. Hopefully that's focusing. So what I did here on the uh, switch arm is I just wedged a plate in there uh, to support the uh, control box for the VFD speed. Okay, and then our, see if we can get a focus in here, our VFD mount. The air is right there, so I got a Black switch is a disconnect for the VFD, and then we've got a light switch here. 
back you guys up here and show you what. Uh, let me close this. So I made a, a shelf here. I had a piece of punch plate. We'll get a close up of that in a second here. And I put a shelf up above. And there's those lights. And I, you, I, I have some marine plywood. I made uh, uh, some backing plates here so I can, I can, uh, you know, hang accessories. There's the drawbar. I've got uh, the face plates, a couple lathe dogs. <laughs> There's the three jaw. And <laughs> I did this for the mill also. So what I did is I just got a shower curtain rack. So this is one of those I beam type shower curtain racks and I just got a just a clear shower curtain so when I'm milling I just pull that curtain across or, I'm, or turning I guess not wouldn't be milling and uh, that's my uh, swarf and oil <laughs> um, uh, containment all right come on over here so I had this uh, piece of punch plate out on the scrap pile and it's it's stainless steel it's got uh, three quarter holes in it so this is actually working really good for an accessory shelf and uh, you know it's right here not within arm's reach but close enough so that you don't have to go running around the shop looking for your tooling okay well there we go got the old Lincoln welding machine back here All right, let's, uh, so our drive tension works nice and smooth. Our flat belt drives here. All right, let's, um, let me reposition here and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll run a few things. Taper attachment. There's the uh, clamping fixture. And this is the first um, taper attachment I've ever dealt with. And I've, I've never even used one, so <laughs> it's gonna be a learning process. But anyways, I, I'm, I think this is how you normally run them. You just leave the clamping fixture loose until, you're, until you have a project where you need the uh, taper attachment and then you you know it's got a clamping uh, block on the bottom you, you bring it around clamp it onto the onto the ways and you, know, you got to set up your your uh, your taper and so forth uh, this came with just a bolt on here um, <laughs> I just ordered from McMaster car one of these uh, cast iron uh, uh, hand nuts and you, you have to face off, um, uh, you know, the mating surface. I don't remember whether it came uh, tapped or not. Um, but anyways, I, I put that on much better than having the, uh, the, the just a, a nut on there. Okay, so I've got the uh, the clamp arm clamped to the ways to the bed. Our hand nut here is tight, and I dialed in some uh, taper. What I do, uh, eight degrees, which is just under two inches per foot, and I I took the guard off so we can see what's happening here. Okay, so there's a. Uh, a sleeve that runs through this clamp nut and the um, the lead screw runs right through that okay so we can get a look in here all right so if I crank the there we go so I'm just using the, the normal feed handle here and what happens is 
normally you, you'll leave this loose and the uh, the sleeve which which is the anchor point it's stationary so our cross slide is just moving via the hand wheel okay now the the hand wheel there's it's a um, it's a, it's a, a a uh, coaxial shaft with a with a keyway in it. Oh, sorry, we lose our focus here. There we go. All right. So, and if we if we move the carriage, it's going to follow the taper. Okay. There's enough friction here that it's that it's still following the taper. Uh, let me go ahead and tighten down. All right, so as we move back and forth with the carriage, the guide block there on the way is just moves in and out with the angle of the taper. And if we come over here, see if I can get a shot here. You can see the cross slide is moving following the taper. And if we come around to this side, So it's pretty slick. I, uh, you know, apparently other machines you have to remove the uh, the feed nut whenever you use the uh, taper attachment. To, but but the way this is designed, all you got to do just loosen the handle, and you're back to normal. So that's uh, that's pretty slick. Okay, like I say, I've never used a taper attachment before, so <laughs> we're gonna have to do a. Sorry about the focus. We're gonna have to do a project uh, where we can uh, test it out. All right, so let's start it up. So I've got the drum switch wired into the VFD, so it works just like you would expect. There's forward, we're cranking up here. We've got speed adjustment. And I do have it set up with a minimum. Yeah, let's see, what is our minimum speed? 586 RPM. Now that's motor RPM, so depending on what gear selection you're in, your spindle is going to be different, of course. And let's crank her all the way up. Yeah, hold on a second, I'm going <laughs> to... We're, we're throwing some oil off the uh, off the chuck here, so let me uh, let me pull the uh, curtain, and I'll be right back. All right, let's speed her up. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting a little oil thrown off here. That's all right. Let's come around to the VFD. So notice the RPM, 2000, that's motor speed again. Now this motor is, is only a 1750 RPM motor. And so this is the beauty of a VFD. And if you look in the corner there, we're running at 70 Hertz. So you can overspeed with a VFD drive as long as you don't overamp. <laughs> okay, so let's slow her back down here. Now, I'm going to do a whole um, series on VFD drives, and uh, we'll explain that in a little more detail. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Slower here. All right, so I I do have braking set on the uh, on the drive. Um, 
it's what they call um, uh, magnetic braking, not dynamic braking. So it's not as, as uh, strong of a braking action as you would get with dynamic braking. Um, but it's easier to set up and you don't need a braking resistor on the VFD. Okay. I included a jog button, which is pretty handy. So whenever you hit the jog button, it will run in forward at a reduced speed. Okay, that's really handy, um, especially if you're uh, using the dial indicator. Um, that way, you don't have to turn by hand. And, and, uh, and usually, when you're, what I notice when you're turning by hand, um, it'll affect the uh, uh, the run out a little bit because you're putting pressure on the bearings when you're when you're you know, pushing on one side of the spindle or chuck versus the other. Okay, we do have reverse. Now I know I got a screw on chuck, so I got to be careful <laughs> using reverse. But we do have it. Uh, that is another advantage to VFD. Um, if you just have a standard on-off control and you go into reverse, you're going to go into full speed, full torque reverse, and that's bad with a screw-on chuck. At least with a VFD, it, it does it in a controlled manner. Okay, so let's try some power feed here. Actually, there's forward. Okay, let's fire up. Okay. So, let's go with the, the carriage. There we go. We're, uh, we're at a pretty low rate of speed here. Let me uh, let me select a different uh, feed rate here. Be right back. Okay, I got a faster feed rate here. That was just too hard to do with one hand. <laughs> All right, so you see our lead screw is going a little faster. And let's see what we got here. Okay, there's our carriage speed. Go the cross cross feed. There we go. Of course, I'd have to reverse the feed, so we're feeding out instead of in. That's the demonstration. That's good enough. Okay. Back to neutral. Let's try our half nut. I don't have the threading dial engaged right now. Okay. Half nut. Let me get the threading dial going. Okay. Get the threading dial engaged. Try to engage the half nut right on the floor here. There we go. Okay, disengage. Run the carriage back. We want a half line this time. I like it. Okay, here we go. We're going to make our first cut here. We're going to take 20 thou off. We've already touched off. Be 
speed by hand here to see how it's going to go. Oh yeah, no problem. All right, let's try the auto feed. That's 20 foul. Right speed. All right, so we're setting up for some mystery metal turning here. <laughs> this is actually a piece of axle shaft, so it's out of a uh, GMC Chevrolet truck. Uh, I think it's a 14 bolt axle. This is some hard stuff. Um, I've annealed it in the wood stove, and I can tell I've done some grinding to try to get some of the scaling off of it. So. Let me set it up here and uh, we'll see what happens. There we go. That ought to be good. opportunity to check the tailstock alignment also um, see if we're cutting a taper or not <laughs> 